Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. Behind me is the Arc Captain MiG-200. This is the cheapest welder I have here in the shop. So we're gonna test this thing out, then we're gonna compare it to the other machines we have in the shop, and then we're gonna put it to some practical work on this 1927 Ford. So this thing is being marketed as a professional welder marketed toward new welders. 400 bucks right now on sale, and the company has told me that they're gonna do a bigger Black Friday sale. So you might be able to get one of these things for under 400 American dollars. It's less than I've ever spent on a welder. And no matter who you are or what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to get into welding, even as just a hobby, or you're trying to start doing something professionally, your budget's your budget. So you need to get the best tool you can possibly afford. But what you can afford is just what you can afford. That's how it is. This man is a genius, a genius. So out of the box, it comes with a whip. It comes with the ground cable. It comes with a stick welding connection, which is really interesting for a MIG. Sometimes you find that on TIG machines, but not so often on MIG machines. I don't really care. I don't do much stick welding. I am primarily interested in how this MIG welds steel. It comes with a power cable. This is completely common, but didn't used to be. And I think it's a huge bonus. It is a 110 or 220 volt. So it will happily run on 110 to 120 volts or 220 to 240 volts. We'll get more into these machines later, but I have two machines here because this one only runs on 110 and this one only runs on 220. And these were over 600 a piece. So this thing is marketed as a multi-process welder. Gas MIG, flux core MIG, stick, scratch start TIG, and an aluminum spool gun option. For me, I don't really care about any of that. I would buy this machine to MIG weld steel on projects like that. Everything from chassis work to sheet metal work. That's what I would be after. If you want to do stick welding, it does come with the lead for that. If you want to do the scratch start TIG, you have to buy the TIG setup and you have to buy the aluminum spool gun setup. It also says it can push aluminum, but no MIG machine can really push aluminum because you can't really push aluminum. But you would want to get a Teflon liner for this gun, but I still don't think that's why you should be purchasing this machine. So your ears may perk up when you hear TIG attached to a MIG machine at a $400 price tag. But if you're like me and you're into this like hot rod stuff and you're old enough and you watched American Hot Rod and that's kind of like the stack and dimes thing you're after. Or if you're new to it and you love channels like uh, Make It Custom or whatever, Scratch Start TIG is not the droid you're looking for. There's no option for a pedal to control the heat or the start. It's going to be like playing a one-handed guitar. You really do want to be in the market for a proper TIG welder that does AC and DC so you can do aluminum as well. High frequency starts so you don't have to touch the tungsten, literally scratch start it like a machine like this. I mean, maybe it's neat that it can, but practical use for me is goose egg zero. This is my big, massive Lincoln Square Wave 255 TIG. I will say that this company is selling a TIG machine that has nearly every function that this one does. And it's under 700 bucks, I think. This is an inverter style machine with synergic control. Synergic control is just Fancy words for has auto settings. The thing about the modern synergic welding setup is there's still flexibility in the parameters. So once you've dialed this in and you've got the amperage in the ballpark and it's auto setting your voltage for you and auto setting your wire speed, if you start to weld and it's too hot or too cold, you can adjust the voltage within the parameters. And I think this one will go three volts in either direction. I will say the Simder welder that I've been using exclusively for the past few months works exactly the same way, but it has a five volt range in either direction. 10 volts versus six volts. Does it matter? Sure. Does it matter enough? No. But if this isn't working out for you and you can't dial it in quite the way you want, you can just turn the synergic setting off and then you have full control digitally, which is really, really, really helpful. I say that because these older transformer machines, this is your voltage and amperage. You have A through E, and there is no in-between setting, and then you have to set your wire speeds. If you're not getting exactly what you want, and what you really need is somewhere between B and C, you, the welder, need to have techniques to overcome the gaps between settings. Yes, you can do it. Yes, you can learn. And yes, these things are incredibly reliable. Some welders come with a regulator, some don't. This one does not, so I would budget 100 bucks for a bottle and a regulator. This thing will run flux core, but if you're doing this type of stuff, flux core is just not, it's just not where it's at. It will get the job done, but it's not, I think, what you have in mind. Full Synergic factory settings. Okay. Okay, let's just tear it up. <laughs> okay. 
flipped it on, full penetration, didn't burn through it, first try. That's pretty impressive. Uh, that's the standard Synergic setup using the Miller calculator to get us to 18 gauge settings. Factory pre-flow, post-flow, which is something that you can set on this machine. I see no need to mess with it. It sets how early the gas starts before the arc and how long the gas runs after the arc. It also has burn back control, which if you're a new welder, that's actually a really big deal. It decreases the probability of the wire falling up, burning back, and attaching itself to the tip. On the transformer machines like those Lincolns over there, all you can do, that's a technique thing. If you have the wire speed too low and the amperage too high, that wire will melt straight back and weld itself right to the tip and you'll be getting a new tip. That's a pretty impressive start. So I'm gonna go the other direction and we're gonna hook it up to 220 and weld some really thick stuff, see what happens. So we're gonna go straight for the juggler on this one. I've got some quarter inch steel. So I swapped it over to 220. What I've noticed right off the bat is this will now go to 160 amps versus 120 amps, which seems to be the max for 0 0.030 wire. I think if I shift it, I can get it all the way up to 180. If I cheat it and pretend like I am at 0 0.035. So this welder maxes out at 180 amps MIGing, even though it's called the MIG 200 and is a 200 amp machine. I think that is only available on the scratch start TIG. Anyway, that's more than enough juice. I think the same thing with the Simder is that it's a 200 amp machine, but the MIG functions cap out at 180, 190, something like that in the ballpark. Still more than enough to do anything like this. Dang. Okay. Hot out the gate. That's getting pretty deep in there, team. From cold metal. Wow, okay. Let's really try to get it now. Yeah, it's uh, it's burning through this, no problem. No problem. It's getting in there. This is just bad welding right there, but it is, what you can see is it's keyholing the quarter inch material. The keyhole is the wider spot where it's burning it away. So I'm actually running too hot and moving too fast. That's why it looks like this. So right out the gate, you're gonna be able to do quarter inch material with this thing. That's at 160 amps. This thing goes to 180 amps. Um, I'd feel comfortable, no problem, comfortable welding motor mounts to a boxed chassis like this with this machine. It can do the work. Not only can it do the work, the Synergic settings work. They function the way that they're supposed to, which is a huge help for anyone just starting out. If you can get into the ballpark, it gives you a point of reference to learn how to change your technique and how to adjust the machine and how to fine tune it if you're burning through material or if your welds are too cold. That's simply the entire art of all of it. And then you need to try to go in straight lines. The question is, as always, will it last? Well, it's got a two year warranty and it's 400 bucks and it's gonna be cheaper on Black Friday. So at 200 bucks a year, I think it's an incredibly good starting point. Stay tuned, we're gonna do some welding on the car, but let's talk about what you get and what it is compared to these other machines in a little bit more detail. So out of the box, you get a very capable MIG welder at 110 or 220 with Synergic control. Also has a feature we haven't talked about that I absolutely love, check this out. They put a light in here, I love it. So you can see what you're doing when you're doing this. Does have the other options, spool gun, scratch start TIG, but you have to buy extra stuff for that. For the purely MIG functions, it's pretty darn swell. I wanna compare it to these machines because these were the entry level prosumer machines. These are about 10 years old and they were in the range of five to 600 bucks back then. And now they're in the six to 700 range. So Lincoln's a tried and true name. These machines are absolute workhorses and they will last absolutely forever. Huge disadvantage we're looking at right here is I have two because they're not dual voltage. Back in those days, I bought a 110 and then I had to do some heavy steel welding. So I had to buy another machine to do the 220 to do the thicker stuff. Well, this machine has that built in right from the factory. And so does this one. I will say these still have a place in the world. If I was starting a company and saying, gonna build some trailers or something like that, where every day I was welding angle iron and bar stock or whatever. These things are so consistent and so reliable that this is exactly what I would go for 
or a small business making one or two types of products. However, given the option and my monies, if I was a hobbyist, had a small shop, was just getting started with welding, wasn't gonna use them every single day, 12 hours a day, I would definitely be somewhere between these two machines, without a doubt. All right, gang, let's talk about these two though. Out of the box, that's 400 bucks right now. Apparently gonna be on sale soon for Black Friday. That's on sale for about 750 now. Maybe they will update the sale and the price will come down a little bit more. The two major differences between these two welders right now is that that functions as a plasma cutter as well. That may be a big deal because a plasma cutter, even the best arc one I have is around 200 to 250 dollars and that does make up the price gap. You get it all in one box if space is an issue. This you need a separate machine. That's a matter of preference team. I prefer the separate machine because you do have to change leads and reset up the cinder welder to make it work as a plasma cutter. There are a lot of reasons you might want it in one box and be willing to change the leads every time you have to change the process. For me, I'm super lazy. If I can't just flip it on and make it work, then I'm, I'm not going to. I'm gonna find a faster route to get to what I wanna do, like pick up a grinder or something. Now when talking about space though, don't forget that despite the size of these machines, and they're both very lightweight, space is gonna be determined by what size bottle you wanna run. Also, if you wanna use one of these as a plasma cutter or purchase an additional plasma cutter like that, well, don't forget, you need an air compressor. Maybe not one quite that big, but it's an additional cost and obviously doesn't come with it, but it's an integral part to making a plasma cutter do plasma cutting things. These things both weld great, if you just need a MIG welder to get started on a project or learn how to do it, this is hundreds of dollars less than anything else in the shop. And I think I could teach anybody to weld off this machine. I do want to be crystal clear. I don't own a lousy machine. Everything I own works great and could probably teach you to weld just fine with any one of these machines. However, if you said, hey man, I want to start maybe a car project, but I want to learn how to weld to do said project, I just need to get started welding. I think I would steer you toward the MIG 200 because it's a low cost entry level to get into welding. And I've got a feeling that it's gonna last long enough for you to learn what you need to do and really get into it. And if it goes belly up in two years, once the warranty is out, you spent 200 bucks a year to learn a new skill. It's an excellent welder and it has a plasma cutter attached, but it's a significant investment at 750 bucks. These are workhorse machines. They'll last forever. They're transformer machines. They weigh a ton. However, they're not flexible, so it's gonna rely on you to get better and better to use them. And they cost in the neighborhood of six or $650. I also wanna be crystal clear. They're not paying me to do this. They did send the machine to let me try it so that I put out a video and tell you guys what I actually thought about it. So this is genuinely my opinion based on my experience with the machine. And I am excited about it because I've spent a lot of money on welders over time. And this seems like a pretty viable option at a very reasonable cost. Let's do some work on the old Model T. So we're looking at a 1927 Ford. It got clobbered by a tree on this side. If you watch the channel for a long time, you know all about that. Well, I had to rebuild the top of the cowl there, but then I reversed the firewall. And so the damaged side of the firewall is now over there and the correct side of the firewall is over here. So I built this to fit the firewall when it was all busted. So I need to trim this down and get this metal to fit this contour a little bit more better. Not bad for freehand cutting a hundred year old car. Didn't even mark it. All right. <laughs> Let's get this dialed in. Needs a little bit of persuasion. So I've got it set up. Factory settings, dialed in based on the Miller calculator. This thing does have a tack weld setting. So you set the parameters, you squeeze the trigger, and it welds for a certain amount of time with a certain amount of wire at a certain amperage to give you like a full spot tack weld. That may be neat. I got a, my own little tack welder set up right, right there.
feel pretty good about that. Rusty old junk hot rod welding. So I'm just gonna tack this down the line, making sure it's kind of where I want it. Some tack welding down the seam, trying to minimize warpage the best I can. I'm loving what it's doing. I turned it down about four volts. It's just got that six volt range. Now it's doing great. It's awesome. I mean, can't be mad at that. I freehand Frankenstein cut it. We're already tacking it back together. I was burning through a little bit. Still on the Synergic settings, I just wandered over, rolled the voltage back, started going again, and we're right as the rain. So that's just something I do when I'm welding sheet metal is I just kind of lay down a series of tacks. Like I tack it and then as I see the pool cool, I tack it. Then I see it tack it on and on. So these are more like tacks than a series of welds, which is a technique that's very common on thin sheet metal. Please this punch. It performed great. Dialing it in those little bitty bits made all the difference in the world on this thin sheet metal. You can definitely do this type of work with those transformer machines but a lot more to do with technique. This, roll back that voltage till it's just right, kind of doing the Goldilocks. Welded great. Let's grind it down, see how it looks. I mean, not bad. It's full penetration. I could grind it and try to make it look great for the internet, do a little hammer and dolly work and all that stuff that's standard for the sheet metal work. Just trying to exhibit what this welder can do right out of the box. You have witnessed every bead I have laid down with this welder. It's just, it just works. That's, that's all there is to it. Not bad. We are now much more symmetrical -er. It's been bothering me since I reversed the firewall. The metal work, well, that's up to me, but the tool performed excellently. I think a lot of people will agree that like dialing something in for sheet metal or small stuff or rusty old metal is sort of like the hardest thing you're gonna do on a MIG as a hobbyist. Thicker metal is just generally easier to weld, it's more forgiving. But this thing's tunability made that very easy to dial in. I didn't burn through one time after I dialed it in. Burn through, roll back the voltage, went at it again, done. So I really hope this helps you out out there. I go on YouTube all the time to look for product reviews or tests or whatever because Money is, uh, you know, you work hard for those ducats. So if you're gonna put it into a tool, you don't wanna get a dud and you don't wanna get something isn't worth the money because 400 bucks is still an investment. If this thing continues to work the way that it's working now for two years, the length of the warranty and then explodes, I still think it's a good deal at 400 bucks. I have no reason to believe it won't last longer than two years. I'm just saying that's the guarantee. So 200 bucks a year, for a pretty decent little welder. I say pretty decent little welder, like it cut right through quarter inch, plus it tuned all the way down to do the sheet metal work. And I apparently left it on 220 because I was using the 110 for the grinder. It comes with a very good and legible set of instructions. If you've watched my Beaver <laughs> laser video, you'll find that that's not always the case. And sometimes good instructions really help out. So that's also good news. So if you are looking for a welder for 400 bucks or less, this should definitely be on the list. It may not be the best out there. It may not be the only one out there, but it's the only one that I have tried. And so far, so good. I hope this helps you out there if you're shopping. Good luck on your projects, and we will see you next time on Between the Sharks. I can't believe I just did that firewall in 15 minutes, and it's been bothering me for like eight months. All you gotta do is just do it. <laughs>